back with me for our celebration of Black History Month. I am with the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, Dr. Lonnie Bunch. Welcome, Lonnie. Oh, thank you. Very pleased to be with you. Maybe we can start with you talking a little bit about the Smithsonian. It is a massive organization that you run. The Smithsonian is 19 museums, 21 libraries, research institutes around the world. It's really the gift to America. It really allows us as Americans to explore history, art, culture in ways that make us better. And that in essence, the Smithsonian is really this reservoir that people can dip into that helps people really define reality and still find hope. Well, I certainly consider the Smithsonian to be a gift. I take advantage of the museums every time I'm in Washington, D.C. And I have a favorite. It's the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and you are the founding director of that museum. I'd be disappointed if that wasn't your favorite. <laughs> uh, in, in many ways, there was something powerful about being able to create a Smithsonian Museum to recognize that millions of people around the world will explore history in a way that they wouldn't in their own towns. And so for me, building the National Museum of African American History and Culture was really an opportunity to help people rethink what America is, reestablish African American history as central understanding who we are as Americans. Ultimately, the museum story is simply saying that you can't understand who we are as Americans without understanding the resiliency, the hope, the strength of an African-American community. Yes, yes, and that's certainly what we see in the documentary that we're about to watch, Freedom On My Mind from 1994. This is a film that traces a very important period in the long black civil rights struggle in the early 1960s. Let's talk about that period. What's the story that's being told? I think this is one of the most powerful documentaries I've ever seen because it really says, let me look at a three or four year period uh, and really help people understand what was going on. This is really looking at, on the surface, the struggle for voting rights and registrations in Mississippi in the early 1960s. But it really is also about how did people live? How did they survive? What was the culture they experienced? I mean, one of the things that is so powerful is to realize that this documentary helps us understand segregation in ways others did not. It gives us kind of a dual-sided coin. On the one hand, we get to see people like Bob Moses, people who come from outside of Mississippi who are committed to finding fairness, to helping people register to vote, to help people find a different Mississippi. But on the other hand, you see local people like Fannie Lou Hamer and others whose names are less well known. And you recognize that the civil rights movement is really a local movement. And I think that's one of the powers of this documentary is that you see it as something that happens in Mississippi. And yes, it's important for Dr. King to come through. It's important for Robert Kennedy to come through. But what's really key is the courage of the people that live there and how they worked with people like Bob Moses to come up with strategies, to find the courage. Because I think that's what you really see in this documentary, the courage to be able to stand up when people are lost. And it reminds you more than anything else that change in America does not come without loss, does not come without sacrifice. Yes. There's always been a big critique of some of the mainstream Hollywood films about the civil rights struggle, that they focus on white saviors. This is a documentary that shows not just the resilience of black people, but the collaboration that took place. In some ways, it really is revelatory because it tells us that what happens when you're able to encourage many white college-age students to come to Mississippi. What it tells us is that, one, it means that you're getting attention from the media, from their parents, from legislatures, that you wouldn't get if it was just blacks. Whether that's right or wrong, sure. that's what happens. Because they're putting their lives on the line, and so their lives matter. And that's when the press attention and the change can, can kind of take place. Because the story is no longer just Mississippi. Yeah. It's the story of people coming from Ohio, New yeah. Jersey, Pennsylvania. Um, and I think that's crucial. And then it really is this sort of tension between those that come from the outside and those that are there who realize that this is really about their lives. Um, this is about the culture that they live in. And how do you find the right way to sort of embrace these new people who are coming to help, but also recognize that they've got to fit into the way that you want to do it. 
And I think that's one of the powerful things is to see the average citizens of Mississippi standing up, finding ways to make a way out of no way. Mm, such a powerful story and one that I'm so glad we're reflecting on this Black History Month. Thank you so much, Lonnie. Thank you. Let's take a look from 1994. Here is Freedom On My Mind. Back with me to discuss Freedom On My Mind is the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, Dr. Lonnie Bunch. Thank you. Well, Lonnie, this film is so powerful. And one of the things I think it does so beautifully is use music, especially blues music, to sort of move us through these individuals and these stories. Let's talk about the importance of blues music in particular, but then music in general in the movement. Well, I think what this documentary does is it really reflects the culture of Mississippi. You hear that music, you hear the blues, you hear that guitar, and it really brings you into Mississippi. But then what it also does is it reminds us how important music is, not just as the soundtrack of our lives, but also as a way to help people survive. What I was always struck by as I talked to people who were involved in the civil rights movement, they talk about how the music helped them deal with their fears that as they were about to confront terror, violence, the fact that they could come together, hear the music, sing together, it gave them the strength, not of one, but of many. So the music itself is so powerful because it does capture that feel, but it also is this umbrella that protects people as they move forward. Yes, yeah, so powerful. And talking about powerful singers, Fannie Lou Hamer, we hear her voice, and she wasn't just singing because she was good at singing, but to do exactly what you're describing. She was using her voice as a speaker, as a singer, to uplift her people and to create that umbrella that would give them the courage that she seemed to embody so powerfully. Because Fannie Lou Hamer is really, without a doubt, one of the most important leaders of the Mississippi movement, one of the most important leaders of the civil rights movement, because in a way, she is of that community, right? So she knows what she's risking. And she tells the stories about being beaten um, and the pain that she felt. Um, and she becomes someone, rather than cowed, she uses that to find her voice. She uses that to demand for freedom. And to hear her speak at various times through this documentary is really powerful. And for me, it's really this whole struggle with the Mississippi Democratic Freedom Party yeah. to really say that black people in Mississippi need to have access and they need to be part of the Democratic Convention of 1964. And to hear her speak and say, you know, is this not the land of the free and the home of the brave? Is this not a place where we should be treated fairly? In some ways, she became the conscience of the nation during that period in the struggle for Mississippi. Yeah, and what a strategy that was, right? To try to create a space within this political party and the formal aspects of this system for people who had been excluded. Exactly. To recognize that the great strength of the movement is not asking for anything more than just fairness. Let me have access to the political system. Let me be represented in the Democratic Party. Let me be what America says we are, the land of the free and the home of the brave. So in some ways, the great strength of this is simply saying, I want to be an American. That's right. Yes. Well, this is a question that we're still asking. So many people are still asking. And we've seen ways in which the voting rights of so many people have been eroded and, and, and access to voting has been blocked. There's still very much a, a passion and a need for activism around voting rights. What do you think people can learn from a documentary like this for the activism that's taking place today? You know, I was speaking to somebody recently who said, well, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to vote. And when you see this documentary, when you see what people gave up, in order to make sure that you could vote, then you have to vote. Because for many people, the vote was really your doorway into America, into being an American, into having rights and protection. So what I hope is that people come away from seeing this documentary by saying, it is crucially important that we participate in the system, that we challenge the system, that we live up to the fact that so many people lost their lives, suffered beatings so that we could vote. That's what you want people to do, is to see voting is not something that is casual or cursory. Voting is something that is essential, and people died to give you that essential right. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lonnie. Thank you. Such a pleasure to discuss this film with you. And I hope you'll stay right there because we have another one coming right up. Thank you. You've got me. Next, Spike. Next on TCM, get on the bus, then the murder of Fred Hampton, and later, Cicero March. Walk with TCM tonight. <laughs>